Hello, this is Breuer and welcome to Civilization VI A to Z, where I will go through each of the civilizations one by one and provide thoughts, strategy, and rankings. Today we will look at France, which is a civilization that is focused on building a lot of mid-game wonders and playing the espionage game to both protect itself and offensively cripple its opponents. France's leader is Catherine de Medici. She has three main bonuses. First, she has one extra level of diplomatic visibility with every civilization she's met. This can be useful to keep an eye on your opponents, especially to see what wonders each of them are building. You can get to level 3 very quickly by trading with other civilizations and setting up an embassy. She also receives a free spy and extra spy capacity with castles. Not only do you get an extra spy that you don't have to take the time to build, but you also get it a full era before anyone else. You should use this spy early on to get some extra gold or technology boosts. And finally, her third bonus is that all spies start with a free promotion. The first promotion for a spy is probably more valuable than just about any other unit in the game. This takes you from fairly average odds for many of the espionage actions to almost guaranteed success for most of them. If you can get an early quartermaster, this will make all of your other future spies that much better. The overall scores for this leader are as follows. For domination, I would give it a 4. Either the free gold or the technology boost will help your overall military situation if you are pushing for a domination victory. For science, I would give it a 6. Use the free gold to buy great people or use the technology boost to help your overall science progress. In the late game, use your promoted spies to take down other civilization's spaceports to make sure that you have plenty of time to build your own. For culture, I would give it a 6. Again, the free gold can be used to buy great people, but you can also target other people's great works to both add to your own collection as well as slow down their tourism growth. And finally, for religion, I would give it a zero. Unfortunately, these bonuses will not help a religion push. France's civilization ability is called Grand Tour. It has two parts. First, you get plus 20% production towards medieval, renaissance, and industrial wonders. There are 42 wonders in the game at the time of this video, and this bonus applies to half of them. Some of the best wonders in the game show up during these three eras, such as Forbidden City and Ruhr Valley. The second part of this bonus is that you get double tourism for wonders of any era. This is a very significant bonus if you can take advantage of it. Obviously, there's nothing here that says you had to be the one that built the wonder, so if your neighbor beats you to a few and you're going for a culture victory, it is definitely to your benefit to find those wonders a new home within your borders. The overall scores for this civilization ability are as follows. For domination, I would give it a 6. There are some really good domination focused wonders that you can go for during these eras, such as Alhambra or Venetian Arsenal. For science, I would give it a 6. If you're trying for a science victory as France, you will need all the help that you can get from your wonders. Target ones such as Hui Teo Kali and Oxford University, along with the previously mentioned Forbidden City and Ruhr Valley. For culture, I would give it a 10. With a double tourism for wonder boost, any wonder you build will help you with a culture victory. St. Basil's Cathedral could be great if you were able to pick up a religion as well. Hermitage and Bolshoi Theater are also great culture wonders. And finally, religion gets a 4. As with the above victory choices, there are also a couple great religious wonders that show up during these eras that could help you if you're determined to push for a religious victory. Look to pick up Hagia, Sophia, or Kotoku Inn if this is your goal. France's unique unit is called the Garde Imperiale. It is a melee unit that has plus 10 combat strength when fighting on your capital's continent. By the time this unit comes along in the game, your neighbors on your home continent should have built you plenty of nice wonders for you to confiscate. Take advantage of these incredibly strong units and solidify your hold, then use them to protect what you have acquired. This unit also earns great general points from kills. Though these units aren't really meant for world domination, they could help you to acquire some nice late game generals that can either help with a domination push or to help you hold your defensive territory. These units have a baseline 65 strength and 5 maintenance costs. These units are strong, but they are also expensive. Just like England, you want to make sure that your economy is strong if you're hoping to have a lot of these. The overall score for this unique unit, for domination, I would give it a 7. Overall, these units are almost identical to England's redcoats, and they also have the extra bonus of generating great general points. But where England gets a bonus on every continent but their home continent, these units only get their boost back home. Though you could still use these for a world conquest push, I feel these units were designed to protect your homeland and better enable you to push for one of the other victory types. France's unique infrastructure is called the Chateau. This tile improvement must be built adjacent to a river. River adjacency means that this improvement will take some prime real estate away from other things such as commercial hubs and aqueducts. This improvement gets a baseline plus two culture and plus one appeal. Both the culture and appeal make this improvement a great choice for a culture victory push, though I wouldn't build them based on these bonuses alone, unless you were in the late game and trying to squeeze out a little extra tourism or set up some high appeal spots. 
you get an additional plus two culture if adjacent to a wonder. This is the bonus that really makes this improvement shine. Plus four culture, when combined with the previous bonus, makes this a worthwhile improvement to build in every slot that you can next to a wonder. You also get plus one gold if adjacent to a luxury resource. This is a nice extra bonus to have that can make this improvement even better, but I would think hard about building these next to luxury resources if there isn't a wonder nearby as well. And finally, as with all culture improvements, you get increased tourism with flight. Each of your chateaus that are next to wonders will pump out four tourism apiece. This may not sound like much by itself, but it adds up fast if you can get enough of them up. The overall scores for this unique infrastructure are as follows. For domination and science, I would give it a two. If you can get a few of these up near some luxury resources, the extra gold could help you with your military cost or can be used to purchase great people, but it's not really that much of a boost overall. For culture, I would give it a 10. These improvements are incredibly good for culture victory and should be built everywhere that you can if next to a wonder. In the late game, and especially after researching flight, you could probably get rid of some of your lower yield improvements away from wonders and squeeze a few of the plus two culture versions of these in. And finally, religion gets a zero. There was just nothing here to help a religion victory. As for overall strategy, if you're playing as France, as soon as you can, start using your spies to both make you stronger and your enemies weaker. Build as many of the mid-game wonders as you can. As with other wonder building civilizations, you can either figure out which victory condition you want to pursue and focus on those wonders, or you can just see what wonders you're able to get and how that might change your victory choices. Even if you aren't going for a culture victory, fill up every spot that you can next to your wonders with chateaus. There are plenty of civics that you will want to get that can help with other victory types as well, not to mention the better governments. Speaking of governments, for the four card slot, if you want to try for some ancient or classical wonders, despite not having your civilization bonus, autocracy would be a logical choice. But overall, I would go for classical republic to see if you can squeeze out a few great people while your neighbors are building those early wonders for you to take later. For the six card slot, Overall, I feel that Merchant Republic is the best choice here because you will want to start building up your treasury a bit for some possible conquest on your home continent, not to mention that you will be spending a lot of cycles building wonders during this period and could use a little extra boost for any districts that you may want to try and squeeze in. And finally, for the eight card slot, if there are still some wonders that you'd like to build or neighbors that you still want to conquer, communism would be a great choice to start off with. But eventually, I feel that switching to democracy would be best, especially if you're pushing for a culture victory. If you're playing against France, you should know that Catherine's leader agenda is called Black Queen. She gains as many spies and as much diplomatic visibility as possible and likes those who do the same. She dislikes civilizations that ignore these espionage activities. If you want to play nice with Catherine, then play the spy and diplomacy game as much as you can. Though with her extra spies and extra promotions, you might want to avoid spying on her directly and focus more on the other civilizations. If you want to go after France, then you really have two main choices. If you don't really care about wonders, then take her out before she gets her unique unit in the industrial era. Alternatively, wait until the very late game after she has built a whole bunch of wonders and after you have mech infantry to combat her guard imperial units. As for victory condition, France's best victory condition is a culture victory. With the increased production for wonders and the increased tourism that you get from them as well, France is going to get a lot of tourism whether you try or not. Add in the extra culture and tourism from chateaus, not to mention the appeal bonus that can help with seaside resorts and national parks, and you can start to see how strong France will be in the culture game. Where do they rank overall? For both domination and science, I would give them a 5. With the right set of wonders, it wouldn't be too hard for France to progress towards either a domination or science victory. That being said, they will be relying heavily on these wonder bonuses, as there is little else that they get for either of these victory types. For culture, I'm going to give them a 10. This is the first 10 that I've given in a category, but I really feel like the strengths that France has towards a culture victory warrants it. Every bonus that France has can help with the culture victory push in some way. The wonder bonuses in Chateau are obvious, but the ability to use your spies to acquire great works and to have your guard imperial units protect your precious borders really helps France to be an absolute powerhouse in the tourism race. And finally, religion gets a two. There are some decent wonders that could help with a religion push if so desired, but France really isn't set up for this victory type. What are your thoughts? Did I get it right? Did I miss something? Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And also please give me a thumbs up if you do like this video and want to see more of these. I do plan to keep these going. So I do appreciate you watching and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye.